What is up, y'all? Welcome back to another video. And in this video, we are talking about the Detroit Lions' first pick of day number three. We are going to be breaking down that pick, analyzing the pick, and giving it a letter grade. Let's get it started. So I would just tell them to take another look, you know? And if not, just get ready, because we're going to take them on a ride this year. Uh, you can predict whatever you want, but we're going to be a hell of a good football team this year. That is right, everybody. So, so far we have done four prospects. If you guys have not seen those videos, make sure you go check them out. We have also started doing free agents. If you guys wanted me to do and continue those, make sure you let me know in the comments below and give me a player you want to see. The support was really, really good on that. So those will definitely be coming back. Just comment below what player you want to see me do next. After we're done with this, we may even go to undrafted free agents. So yeah, let's continue this. This has been really fun for me. I love looking at these draft picks. I know like the support has slowly been going down because of, you know, later in the draft, people don't know the player as much, but I would think y'all may want to learn a little bit about these players a little bit more because everybody knows about Jeffrey Okuda but who knows about Logan Stenberg you know what I mean like so this is where it gets exciting and I love these picks so let's 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 hop right into it so that's right the Detroit Lions had the pick 109 which was the third pick of round number four and the Detroit Lions decided to move back with the Las Vegas Raiders and acquire a pick that basically they lost when they moved up to select the Jonah Jackson. So they moved back from the 109 spot to 121 and they acquired pick number 172. So all in all, it was a pretty good trade when you look at who we missed out on. Um, obviously the Lions weren't worried about losing his guy because they probably wouldn't have moved back one of these players that they really wanted. They probably would have just stood there, st st stood pat and took that player. When you look at who they missed on, let's just fly through them really quickly. Uh, the first player would have been John Simpson, the guard out of Clemson, uh, which obviously we selected Jonah Jackson and we did anyways when we moved back. So probably not a need. Darnay Holmes, the cornerback out of UCLA. Again, we already had Okuda. Solomon Kinley, another guard out of Georgia. Joshua Kelly, running back. We didn't need that. We already got DeAndre Swift. Troy Pride Jr., cornerback, Notre Dame. We didn't need that. Leaky Fotu, defensive lineman, possibly. But again, we got him later. Harrison Bryant, tight end, two went to the Browns. Don't really need that. Plus, we got one of them the free agency. That's a beast. Uh, ben Barch, the tackle, didn't really... I mean, you could have went tackle, possibly, maybe. DJ Wom, the uh, ed, the defensive lineman out of South Carolina. Elbert, I don't know how to say his last name, the tight end. Uh, so, again, we didn't need a tight end there. Michael Walker, who is an inside linebacker. And LaMichael Pierney, who is a running back. Honestly, after seeing who we picked... There's not one of those players that I would have taken over Logan Stenberg. Logan Stenberg, to me, has always been a, a good offensive lineman when I've done my mock drafts and when I've looked at him. You know, I never thought he was the best because there were some major concerns. But uh, I never, you know, like, I never thought that John Simpson was better than Logan Stenberg. I'm going to be real with you. I never thought that. I've never, you know, I never thought Solomon Kinley was better than Logan Stenberg. I thought Solomon Kinley was good. I don't know if I ever thought he was better than Logan than uh, Logan Stenberg, though. I think I had Ben Barch up there, but we didn't go tackle. Anyways, we went guard. So, honestly, the fact that you acquired a pick and still picked up Logan Stenberg, you know the good grade's coming. But let's talk about Logan Stenberg a little bit. The guard out of Kentucky. Logan Stenberg is a 6'6", six 317-pound six, guard out of Kentucky who only had one power five... Power Five offer, you know, the Power Five, you know, conferences. He only had one Power Five offer, and that was from Kentucky, so obviously he went to Kentucky. Now, one of his teammates named Drake J Jackson actually said he was the most hated offensive lineman in the SEC, and when you watch him play, you could definitely believe it. I, I, I believe it. I believe that people didn't like this dude because he was... He was pretty physical. Now, he uh, was a redshirt freshman, and uh, during that season, you know, he definitely struggled. His pass blocking skills were really something that struggled. He was consistently a left guard at Kentucky as well, so I just wanted to point that out there because we know Jonah Jackson played right guard at Rutgers, so possibly he could play right guard. Uh, Logan Stenberg was mainly a left guard, but early in his career, he really struggled against pass blocking. I mean, it got a lot better. In 2018, he took a big, big jump. In 2019, he was one of the best, actually, in college football. However, Kentucky just never threw the ball a ton. They weren't a team that's known for throwing the football. Um, you know, they just, they run it a lot. So, you know, he only had 260 plus passing snaps uh, in 2019, but he only allowed one pressure. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty good. I, I That's that's solid. You'll, we'll take that every day of the week. We'll take that. So that ability to get a lot better in pass blocking and make it one of his actually strengths is a huge reason that he was a fourth round pick because if that was not the case, he probably would have fell a little bit further because he was always known to be a great run blocker. Ever since he came into Kentucky, First, first season with Kentucky, he could run block really well. Throughout his career with Kentucky, he was a great run blocker just because of his play style. But the pass blocking took, took a little bit of time to uh, took a little bit of time to get a lot better. And I don't think he's polished there. There's definitely a lot of mistakes I see because of his play style with being overly aggressive. Sometimes he'll lose the balance. Sometimes he'll just fall. Yeah, there's definitely some things he still needs to clean up. He needs to be a little more disciplined. He's not as technically sound as a guy like Jonah Jackson. But he has something that not a lot of other linemen have. 
And, uh, you know, the way he plays that play style, that um, angry, the motor, the nastiness, is something that not everyone else has. You know, Bob Quinn wants those kind of guys. He looks for those trade and offensive linemen. That's why he selected Graham Glasgow. That's why he selected Jonah Jackson. But this dude is on another level when it comes to being mean, okay? This dude is crazy, man. He actually led college football in pancake blocks, which was an unofficial stat. But, uh, yeah, I think that kind of just sums up in, in, you know, just a couple of words how crazy this guy was. Now, if you just watch him, if you just want to watch some games on him, go watch him versus Tennessee. That's one of the best ones that I've seen when this guy is just a monster. But, really, I'm watching him right now, full games. He just throws people down. I mean, I think it's the second play versus Tennessee when I was watching this dude literally pancaked the dude on a second play. Then there was one later, he just threw him on the ground. I mean, he's crazy. He's out of his mind, and he gets a great push from that guard position. And a lot of times when I saw that the Tennessee would go to QB sneaks, they would QB sneak to the left because he would give them that nice little push, you know, because this is a guy you want to run behind. If you're trying to fix your offensive line because you want to be a team that can run the football, you get a guy like Logan Stenberg. And what's great about Logan Stenberg is at the fourth round and later, you're kind of just, you know, hoping these guys can have an impact. The thing that's great about Logan Stenberg is that he's a top talent when it comes to run blocking. He just has some major cons that I believe is the reason that he did fall. And we're going to talk about those penalties. 24 penalties in his five, last two seasons with Kentucky. 24, that's a lot of penalties. You can't be doing that. It's like one a game. You can't be doing that with the Detroit Lions. But... If that can be cleaned up, if that discipline can be brought back, because the reason all these penalties happen is because he's so aggressive. He doesn't want the defensive player to get by. He will just hang on to the dude. He'll throw him down and do whatever it takes, and he will get flagged. So he needs to be more disciplined. But as coaches say all the time, it's easier to pull someone back than, you know, like get him to go, than get him to play harder. It's easier to pull them back and reel them back in. So if the Lions can get their offensive line coach, their coaches as a whole, to get this guy more disciplined and to just kind of reel it in a little bit, this guy's going to be an absolute monster in the NFL because this is the kind of player, this is the kind of lineman that you want to not only bolster that run game, but eventually if he gets more technically sound to protect Matthew Stafford because he doesn't want people to get by. He does not want anyone getting by. And that's the kind of guard I want. That's the kind of guard. That's the kind of physical nature. That's the kind of mindset I want on my offensive lineman. All right. I don't want my quarterback like that where he's crazy aggressive. He's just throwing it everywhere. I want my guy like Logan Stenberg on an offensive line. He's protecting everything. He's going to maul you when it comes to running the football. He's going to open up that run game, open up some big holes, which he did. And he's also going to come with a lot of mistakes early in his career. And I think that's why the Lions actually took him now that I'm looking at it and people are saying okay why would you take another guard when you have joe Dahl, when you have these guys because he's not polished he's got time to work he's got he's got work he may not even start right away i don't know if he's going to start right away after seeing this because he's not polished he's not necessarily i don't think ready to go yet maybe after training camp in the offseason he is um he's not yet because you got to protect matthew stafford and joe Dahl's proven but when he gets there this dude's going to be a Oh my gosh, he's going to be dominant in the NFL because he was dominant in college football. He obviously has the big size, six foot six, three hundred and seventeen pounds. Man, just go watch him. I mean, there's really not a lot for me to say here. I, I really don't know how many adjectives I can use to describe how mean this guy is. I definitely do. I like being in the interior. I like uh, down blocking, pancaking. I like being the one they want to run behind to get a yard or two. He plays through the whistle. He's pancaking people. He never lets this guy go. Um, he needs more discipline, which is one of his cons. Now, Kentucky didn't pass the ball a ton, but again, in 2019, 262, 262 pass passing attempts. He only allowed one pressure, which again was tied for the most in college football. So I guess, you know, when they did pass it, he got a lot better at it. So again, if he's in that, if he's doing that, you know, that's yeah, this guy's going to be an absolute beast in the NFL. I, I just love this pick. I love this kind of attitude. Like, I, he, Bob Quinn talked about Jonah Jackson having it. You can see it in Logan Stenberg when you watch him that this dude's got it. He's got the long hair. He's got it all, man. He he ain't playing around. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there's not a lot for me to say about this one. The fact that they were able to acquire Logan Stenberg and move back, which at some point I believe will be a starter, maybe not right away. I think that gives me an A-. minus. I'm going with an A- minus on this one. Yes, this one's going to be a little bit shorter. There's just not as much for me to say here. Overall, man, his run blocking grade was always really good ever since his first year in college. And his pass blocking grade since 2018 and 19, he just got better and better. So, yeah, this is a guy that's going to have a lot of potential. Um, he's got a lot of potential. You know, I think there's other, you know, maybe more polished guys they could have went with and guys that they maybe can help day one. And I think Logan Stenberg can if, you know, he's in their training camp, he's working, and the coaches can just settle him down a little bit. But, you know, the only problems I see is, you know, sometimes he's overly, overly aggressive and he'll lose his balance and he'll fall. You know, he'll go at someone completely and uh, he'll kind of fall over. But, yeah, that's the kind of guy I want with the run blocking. That's the kind of guy I want protecting Stafford because he's not going to let him get there. I'd rather you throw a guy down. I'd rather you hang on to someone than let our quarterback get hit. And that's the kind of attitude I want to see on that offensive lineman. That's what we need, bro. That's what we need. And that's why I absolutely love this pick. So I'm going A-. Let me hear your thoughts, comments below. Thank you, Brad, for watching. And I'm out.